Welcome to Marriage Heart to Heart. We're Tom and Elaine Waters with Restoration International. And we want you to have a marriage that's heart to heart too. So we have, hope you have your paper and pencil because we're going to be talking about the subject, Please Understand Me, something we all long for. Oh, you like to be understood? Oh, always. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. And I think you like to be understood as well. And that's what we're going to talk about today because when we say, please understand me, that's a heart cry. And it's an honest heart cry. We need to be understood. The problem is, if I want to be understood, and I'm in the me focus, and you've heard us talk about this before, if I'm in the self focus, just what my perspective is, then I'm not listening very good. And if I'm in the me focus, and you're in the me focus. And I want to be understood. And I really want to be right, because if I didn't think I was right, I wouldn't bother to say it. Oh, so you, you not only want to be understood, you want to be right. Don't you? Oh, yes. I like <laughs> to be right, too. And so if we're in the me focus, and we want to be understood, and we want to be right, communication doesn't do very well. If we're in the us focus, and I want to be understood, then I also understand that you want to be understood. And if I want to be right, I know you want to be right. And if we're both in the us focus, then we can have some good communication and we can really understand each other. That's right. It's, it nurtures the communication instead of breaking it down. Yes. And when we're in the me focus, it leads to irritation, frustration, hurt, even cold wars, yes. fears. All kind of responses happen when it's in the me focus. But when we're in the us focus, and that's a choice that I have to make to surrender my heart, to let God change my perspective to really understand you, mm -hmm. and it's something you can do. But whoever chooses to do it first, that's the first miracle that begins to happen in communication. That's right. You know, we often hear of the golden rule. And it's a principle from our sure foundation. We talked about our sure foundation. And this has so many vital principles to communication. Matthew seven twelve says, Whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. That's the golden rule. You know, whatever I'd like somebody to do to me, if I really want you to listen to me, then what Jesus is saying here is, then I ought to really want to listen to you. It's very simple if we're in the us focus. And the us focus only happens if we go to the author of this word, the author of our sure foundation. He becomes the author of really understanding us. Mm -hmm. And then we can understand each other. And that's a nice thing is that God always understands us and he always knows what our real needs are. And so as we're willing to cooperate with him, we have a heart to understand the other person. That's right. And you know, that's been something that you have communicated to me several times in our marriage, that being understood is more important than even being right. Do you remember that? Oh yes, I've said it many times. <laughs> Because if I really have a heart to understand you, and you know that I'm understanding you, then when we come to the end of that conversation, that situation, then if you're really understood, it makes it easier if I don't necessarily agree. But if I don't really understand you, if you don't really feel understood, then where does that leave you? Tempted to become in the me focus. <laughs> okay. That's right. <laughs> tempted to be disappointed with uh, or discouraged or not accepting the poor communication because I don't feel like I'm understood. That's right. And you were talking just a, a moment ago about the, the first part of the miracle, being willing to surrender. When I'm really willing to surrender and choose to receive the power of Jesus Christ, it's only then that I'm going to really be willing to understand you. And so when I've stepped into that surrender, when I've chosen that surrender, that's the first part of a real miracle in modern times. That's right. And it also encourages me in that same thing, that I can accept that. And I find that those feelings that are there, they just kind of start to dissipate. They just, it's like a storm that's being calmed mm. inside. And I really have a heart to understand and ears to hear. And again, it's not so much 
that you under that you agree with me or that I agree with you, but that we understand each other. That's right. And and this is something that I think all couples face, deal with. Um, one of the things that we experienced in, in our early marriage especially were some things that we just couldn't seem to talk about. Now, it wasn't that we couldn't verbally talk about them, but it seemed like because we were not in this us focus where we're really thinking and understanding each other and really being surrendered, one of the things that happened was that when a certain subject would be brought up, we just kind of went awry. <laughs> and we didn't do well in that communication. And so we began to shy away from certain things because we didn't like where it took us. We didn't like the fruit of it. And at that time in our marriage, we just weren't quite ready to move out or to understand that we needed to move out of that me focus into the us focus. We were so busy trying to get my point across to you to get your point across that it was difficult in some of those delicate areas. And so we started sidestepping them. Mm -hmm. And that really is an effective communication. No, and it didn't really resolve the issues no. either. We still had the same <clears throat> issues, but they actually were growing kind of underneath things. That's right. And then when the subject would come up again, it would come up with greater force and intensity. That's and right. we would be a little stronger toward each other but we didn't find a solution. We didn't find a resolve. All we found was it was more difficult to talk about. So we try to stuff it away again and move on to something more comfortable. And you know, what'll happen if that becomes the pattern in a marriage is that more and more things get stuffed and put away and less and less things get really honestly dealt with. That's right. And then communication gets more deteriorated and the walls build and the separation becomes greater. That's right, and, and so there's less and less real understanding. And we've seen this in many couples that we've counseled with. There's less and less real understanding happening, and there's more and more superficial. You move more into the superficial conversation, more into the, okay, did you pay the bills? Mm -hmm. Did you get Susie mm -hmm. to her lesson on time? Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. You're still communicating, but it's not an understanding communication. And so we began to recognize this, and we knew that we needed to do something about it. So we decided to do something about it. That's right. <laughs> because we really cared about each other, and we really cared about our marriage, and we didn't want this to break us down. And again, I really appreciate your leadership in this, because you said to me, honey, we need to make a commitment that we will not let these things go undone. Mm. That's right. And that commitment has been a powerful commitment. And they've heard us mention James 119. The reason why we have referred to this particular, for those of you that have tuned in and, and been watching the program, James 119 is such a powerful text of commitment when it's brought into the personal life. And I remember when we made this commitment that we were going to, by God's grace, really begin to be swift to hear one another. And you know, the other part of this, honey, that was very important is in that James 1.19, swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, the other aspect of that is that when we are swift to hear, we're not just swift to hear each other, we're also swift to hear, what saith my Lord mm -hmm. concerning this matter? Because if you think about it, friends, one of the things that happens when a situation arises is that we tend to want to go to that first impulse and say that first thought. And if we will pause and we will be swift to hear the Spirit speak to our hearts, what saith my Lord concerning the matter? You know, the Bible says you shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. That's not an audible voice. That's the Spirit of the Lord impressing or prompting our hearts, working through our conscience to give us a better way to move forward. And so for us, that commitment was not just to be swift to hear you or you swift to hear me, but it was a commitment that we made between us and the Lord as well 
that we were going to listen to, to what he would have us to say, which would also then give us something better to respond back and, and to give us uh, a, an understanding of what the other person was saying. Mm -hmm. So that mix with do unto others what you'd have them do unto you made a wonderful combination Powerful. to help us in communication that we could really learn how to understand each other. And I can say today <laughs> that we have a very good understanding of each other. That's right. You know, there's nothing that separates us. Yes. And that's the exciting thing. It's, it's beautiful. But do you remember what happened not too long after we made this commitment? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I, I want to encourage you as you listen and as you watch this program that some of the things that that you make a commitment to don't think that it's just going to be wonderful and there's not going to be any tests and things are just going to uh, magically go perfectly thereafter you know when we make any commitment that is worth being a commitment there is going to be a proving a testing and so as we made this commitment to be swift to hear the Lord and one another, and as we, we entered into that, to really take that golden rule to do unto others as we would have others to do unto us, to really do for you what I would wish for you to do to me. Well, I can remember one evening that we were just having a beautiful conversation together. Everything was, I mean, it couldn't have been sweeter and we were just talking along, and I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, I really don't know what happened. But we were just talking along there, and suddenly we became aware that we had gotten onto one of those very delicate subjects. Something that had been in the closet for a while, huh? That we didn't even remember was there. Exactly. It just came up. It's not the <laughs> one that I would have chosen to test the, the commitment. And I tell you, when that came into the conversation. Did you feel the awkwardness? Yes. I felt the, the desire, like, <laughs> maybe it's been too nice. Maybe we just ought to open the closet door and put it back in for a while, you know? <laughs> Can we rewind this exactly. conversation and keep it going real nice? Because where did this thing come from? Exactly. And I tell you, I felt, <laughs> I felt anxiety come inside of me. I felt self want to rise up inside of me. And we want you to stay tuned. We're going to take a break right now. And we want you to stay tuned to find out what the Lord did in this big test that we faced. Stay with us. There are many how-to books available, but there's one that's free and perfect for every couple. How you can build a better marriage. Bible-based matrimonial advice is given in a light-hearted, easy-to-read manner for those contemplating marriage, newlyweds, couples in their golden years, and everyone in between. Simply call or write for your free copy of this amazing little booklet, a handy little tool to help build a better marriage. Welcome back, where we've been talking about how desperately each one of us wants to be understood. And we found ourselves that night almost unconsciously back in one of those situations that no one likes to be in. And I want you to think with me for a moment. You can probably experience, you've, you've been in it, if you've been in a marriage, a marriage that's really honestly uh, seeking to have better communication, you know what it's like when these things come up. There are old ruts that we can get ourselves into in how we respond to these things. And I tell you, those feelings were coming up in me, and I suppose they were coming up in you. Oh, yes. <laughs> All the past came very present to mind at that moment. And, and I, I just, I was looking for a way out of it. And then I remembered the commitment. Did you remember the commitment? Actually, I hadn't. My mind was still thinking of, how am I going to get out of this one? <laughs> it's so beautiful because the Lord wants to bring this commitment to us. He wants to bring it back. So it's not important that both of us remembered. That's right. It only takes one who's, who remembers and then takes the lead in that. Yes. And fortunately, you know, when that, that happened that night and when that little, that still small voice brought that prompting and reminded me of the commitment, I, I wanted to move forward. 
I can't say I was excited about it. <laughs> it doesn't feel exciting when you're in that because you, you only have the past to refer to and you've, you've thought, oh, these things have gone wrong so many times and I, we haven't been able to talk about this. But that night, we moved forward in our commitment. And I remember thinking, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And that's a question that we really need to be asking the Lord in these situations. It's too easy to do what I want to do. It's too easy to do that reaction kind of thing. Lord, what do you want me to do? And the thought that came to me, it's not my thought. It wouldn't have been where I would have gone. But the thought that came to me is, ask your wife where your problem is. <laughs> Can you imagine that? No, I couldn't at that time. <laughs> and, and I did. I can now, though. <laughs> I, I did. I, I cooperated in that situation. I asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? And now he's telling me. Now, no audible voice. He's, he's prompting me with a thought. Ask your wife. And so when I got that little prompting, I also got a little thought that came <laughs> along with it. It was very comforting. In Hebrews 13, 5, this is a thought that came to me. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. This is the God that we serve. It's the same God that worked miracles in the children of Israel's lives crossing the desert. It's the same God that raised the dead and healed the sick. He wants to do this in our marriages. And the thought came to me, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And that gave me courage. And so I turned to my wife and I said to you, so honey, what is it that I do? in these situations. You remember that? <laughs> oh, yes. And I was in shock when you asked me that question because part of the problem was that I had been trying to get you to know what your problem was. <laughs> and you just couldn't see it. And not only could you not see it, but you really didn't want to hear it. And we just always got broken down. And I know you were trying to do the same thing to me. You were trying to help me to see where I had a problem and I just couldn't see it. And so that's why we kind of, okay, let's leave this one let's alone. Let's leave that one alone. <laughs> and so when you said that to me that night, I was very shocked. But I stepped forward with the opportunity. <laughs> and I said, well, honey, there are three things. Oh, and that, when you said it, <laughs> and you said it about that fast, I thought, oh. Three things. It's like you got it already on the tip of your tongue. That part came back too. <laughs> oh. And you know, when you said that, and, and I'm just being very honest with you folks in how that struck me. When she said, well, there are three things. It's like I just felt the self want to rise up in me like a flood. And this is a thought that the Lord brought to me. Be still and know that I am God. Isn't that beautiful? It is very beautiful. That's the God that we serve. He is a living Savior. Jesus wants to save us from ourselves. And when those thoughts and th that self was coming up inside of me, the Lord called to my heart and said, Be still and know that I am God. You know what that said to me in that instant? God is really God. Mm -hmm. And if I will stay surrendered to Him, He can really work in me that miracle that can keep my tongue. I don't have to be overwhelmed by this. And so you continued on. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. And I began to share with you. I, I have to say that and it was, I wasn't, oh good, this is my chance. I was coming into the conversation with, you know, attentiveness. Is he really want to hear what I have to say? Is this for real? In other words, yes. I'm testing. You were testing. I was testing the water. Number one. <laughs> Literally the waters, huh? And when you got to number two, I had another whole battle. You know, I'll tell you what I wanted to do. I wanted to say, but, but. You know how that feels? Yeah. And so, so many times in our previous situations, that's exactly what I'd say. Mm -hmm. But you don't understand. Exactly. Buts always go with, you don't understand me. That's not what I meant. <laughs> but you know, the Lord called to me again. And he reminded me of that verse that we based our commitment on. 
to be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. And so I didn't say, but I let that die with self in that same moment. And then you continued on. So I got past number two. Were you pretty surprised at this point? Yes, I really was. Because I was really listening. You were listening and you were hearing. <laughs> and I was understanding. And you were understanding. And you would, what we talked about in the last program, you would actually ask me back, is this what you're saying? And it was very clear that you right. understood me. And that, that was an encouragement to me. And then I said, number three. And do you remember that when you started sharing number three, that I had complete rest in the Lord. You remember that? Oh, yes. Could you tell? Yes. I mean, your, your physical demeanor was relaxed. It was, it was just, okay, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I mean, I had surrendered in those other two situations. Yes. And, and I know you saw the, the, the countenance. You saw the struggle. But you saw me responding mm -hmm. and surrendering to the Lord. Was that an encouragement to you? It was because it was a choice, a decision, a principle, yes. not by feeling. The feelings, the feelings on the exterior were different than what I heard you doing. But as you spoke those, you know, as you said, okay, number two, I could see you get calm again. Yes. You know, in, in, your, in your countenance, in your body language. And the <laughs> third time, there was no... No lift, yes. no lift inside of you. You know, the way I experienced it, especially the first time, the, the way that I can describe it to you folks here is that it was like the sea raging inside of me. And because of past habits and the past ways of responding, I wanted to just, uh, but the power of the gospel is a life-changing power. When we surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ, this is the good news of the gospel, is that he can keep us to the uttermost if we'll come to him by faith. And I was exercising faith, and I tell you, it felt so good. Didn't it feel good that night to work past this? It, it was, and, and what happened was that not only did you understand me, but after the third one, in that moment of reflection time that you had, yes. you said, honey, I see it. I see my problem. Could you believe it? <laughs> no. <laughs> but yes, I could. I mean, it's, I could see that, that you really could understand and that you accepted it, but it's not what I first expected. Yes. But I saw that miracle happen right before my eyes, and you said, you're right. I do this. And number two, you're right. I have had this. And number three, and you went down one, two, three, That's right. and you said, "Showed I was really listening, didn't I?" You, you were really <laughs> listening, and you know, at that point, I wasn't trying to get you to agree with me. I was just trying to have you understand me. Yes. And in that understanding of me, you saw my perspective, and you agreed with me. Yes. And then you turned to me, or then I then I said to you, I should say, I looked at you and I said, "Honey, tell me what it is in me." And that was the moment I had been waiting for <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> and it's interesting. Do you know what happened in that? The, the, it's amazing to me how God works, but in that instant, here I have my opportunity, but I was so rested in the Lord. I was so excited about how God had worked in my own heart and the, and the fact that I saw it. I saw areas that I, w I was blind in, areas that I excused, areas that I had fought over, and the Lord opened my heart to you that night. I lost all my desire to tell you what I had been trying to tell you in this same conversation in the past. Because before, it was me trying to get you to see. And agree. And you know what was so touching about that is that in due time, we did have that follow-up conversation. Mm -hmm. But it was nothing to mar the beauty of this experience. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's how you responded to me. That's right. You said, honey, this has been so beautiful tonight. Yes. I don't want to do anything that will risk damaging what has happened in our home tonight, what's Amen. happened in our lives. And, you know, you says, I don't want to say anything. Mm. I just, I understand what you say. I agree with what you say. And I will make the changes. And that was powerful to me. 
very powerful. It was powerful to me, too. <laughs> Can't both take us. much credit for it other than cooperating with the Lord. And that's why it's so <clears throat> important that early morning time or that's whatever right. time, whatever time of day you spend with God in the Word, He brings His Word back to you when we need it. He brings it back, just like in this situation. Those verses came as encouragements, as promises, as strength to face a difficult area That's and right. find victory working through it. In our earlier program, we had talked about the seven areas of effective communication. Those have been so powerful in our own marriage to have a committed, regular time for communication. And that communication is really listening with a desire to understand. And then to understand the other person's perspective. Doesn't mean we have to agree, but to understand their perspective and to communicate in the positive. Look for a better way to say it. That's right. It's nice to be appreciated and, and have communication that's, that's that way. Mm -hmm. And to be sensitive to the nonverbal communication because that's happening all the time, whether we like it or not. So if we can be aware of that and how it affects and to stay on the topic. It's important that we stay on the topic and not be sidetracked with things uh, in the past and to be really honest with one another. That's important. Mm -hmm. Anything else, dear? Well, for please understand me, I think we need to add tenderness. And that's our challenge to you this time, is to take these earlier communication tools and now add tenderness with that to really understand your spouse. That's right, and if we put that with being swift to hear, swift to hear the Spirit, and then to hear one another, that tenderness will help us to really understand one another. I think it'd be nice right now that we would ask the Lord to bless our understanding. Father in heaven, we need understanding hearts. Heavenly, beautiful love that only you can put in our hearts. And we pray that as we try to understand one another and as we seek your wisdom to do it, that you will bless us to that end. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And we hope you'll join us next time because we're going to be talking about something that's very important and very impactful in communication. It's called Communication Breakers. And we want you to be here with us so we can have a marriage heart-to-heart -heart with the Lord.